Today, June 2nd, 71 years ago in Italy, after the Second World War, the Italian people decided to go with a democracy. And they've been celebrating tremendously every year at that point in time. It's called Italian Republic Day, and it'll always be on June 2nd. It was on June 10th at one time. They moved it back to June 2nd. First of all, we'd like to do the Pledge of Allegiance the way it should be done. If you don't have a uniform on, remove your hat. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And after the mayor's speech this morning to, to the gun control, I think this city is getting better and better and better because of the people that are here and the people that live in Brockton. Excellent. Now to bring to the microphone a fellow that looks like me today. Todd Petty, president of the Christopher Columbus Lodge of the Order of Sons of Italy and also a member, former member of the city council. Todd Petty. Thank you, George. Thank you. It's wonderful to see everyone here today. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us as we celebrate Festa della, della Repubblica in Italian. Republic Day Italian history. Republic Day commemorates the day on which Italian citizens voted on a new form of government. Following the fall of Mussolini's fascist, fascist Italy, Italians voted for a democratic republic over a monarchy. Republic Day is considered the birth of the Italian nation and today is one of the most important days in Italian history. Republic Day is held on June 2nd, the same day on which the institutional referendum was held in 1946. Every year since 1948, Italians around the world have gathered to celebrate their choice of a republic in the aftermath of World War II. Italy had become a fascist dictatorship before it was a republic. The Italians were ruled by a ruthless dictator named Benito Mussolini for nearly 20 years before he was defeated in World War II and then executed. After World War II, Italy had a small and highly fragile economy. Today it has one of the largest GDPs in the world with over a trillion dollars moving throughout the economy annually. Prior to the formation of a republic, Italy had been a kingdom since 1861 under the monarchy of the Savoy family. Italians who voted in the 1946 referendum had to choose between a republic and a monarchy. The republic received around 12 million votes while the monarchy received around 10 million. Just to show how much it does mean to actually go out and vote. We've all seen elections that have been decided by a dozen votes and even years ago one, one election in Brockton was decided by one vote. So your vote is important. Wynton Marshalls, the trumpeteer, composer and teacher, once said, we always hear about the rights of democracy, but the major responsibility of it is participation. An Italian fact to it I'd like you to know. The name Italia had to come from somewhere. Well, the name Italia is an ancient name for the country and people of southern Italy. The name Italia means land of cattle, calves, or veal. 
So the next time you're out eating your steak or your veal, just remember the people of southern Italy who, is, who Italy is named after. I'm proud to stand here with many of my brothers and sisters from the Christopher Columbus Lodge in Brockton. Christopher Columbus operates on fraternity, equality, and liberty. And we do as much as we can to help everyone in our community. From helping at Christmas time with people who may not have much, to helping with scholarships for kids who are on their way after high school to go into college. And we'll be having our scholarship dinner next week at George's Cafe right up the street in Ward 2. Behind me, to my right, you can see a golden lion. That golden lion is a symbol of the, of the Order Sons of Italy in America. It stands for strength and courage. And the color purple is the color that signifies the Order Sons of Italy in America. And we stand with these symbols very, very proudly. If there's anyone, everyone can join the Sons of Italy. You can be a social member. And if there's anyone here who wants any information about it, it can, after today's event, they can see myself or the immediate past president of the Lodge, Jackie Bonarigo. Thanks again for being here. Thanks for taking time out of your schedules. And again, buona festa della Repubblica in Italia. Molto grazie. Ciao. Well, I've never heard Italian spoken like that before. <laughs> Very good. Now I'd like to call the mayor up here uh, for one reason, one reason, prestige. We have government officials here and I'd like him to be the one to introduce. All right, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I've got a proclamation we'll get to eventually. Just when you thought you heard your last Todd Petty speech at City Hall. <laughs> there was another one. Uh, we just want to be sure to acknowledge all of the elected officials. We'll be bringing up some of the members of the state delegation, uh, but we want to be sure to acknowledge a couple members of the City Council from Ward 6, Jack Lally is here, and from Ward 3, Dennis Ioneri is here who I believe is the only Italian-American currently serving on the city council. The only one left. Yeah. Oh, Monaghan has Italian heritage, that's right. Yeah. Oh, no, no, Monaghan has Italian heritage, that's right. Jack has Italian heritage? Well, there goes your whole theory, Dennis. <laughs> Must be an election year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. So we're going to clarify. Councillor Ianeri is the only remaining Italian-American city councillor whose last name ends in a vowel. All right. <laughs> sometimes why, yeah, sometimes why, yeah. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much, councillors, for being here. Uh, we have uh, from our state legislative delegation and Senator Brady, the Dean of the Delegation. Uh, Senator, would you like to make a couple of remarks? Sure, sure come on up. I'll be brief, but uh, we're very honored here today. This city was built with immigrants and a lot of uh, different nationalities built the city of Brockton. And our, to our Italian immigrants, a lot of the work that was done with mason work and other work in the city of Brockton we are very grateful to you. Of course, Brockton is known for our only world heavyweight champion, Rocky Marciano, but there are many, many great Italian families in Brockton that have contributed to the city of Brockton, and we're very fortunate. Uh, it, it must have been very difficult during World War II because of a lot of our Italian immigrants had to fight against their homeland. They were, they were immigrants from the old country, and they believed in democracy and freedom, so they fought and died for our country so that we enjoy the freedom we had today. And it was against, as, as was mentioned, a dictator in Italy. But thank God that you served our country and you fought for our country so we enjoy the freedom so we can celebrate a flag day like today. Uh, I even remember our city clerk Tony Zoli telling me about the night watchmen during the war that would come up the street and bang on the doors and the windows of the houses 
to make sure the shades were pulled because there was a blackout back in that era. Um, because we were worried about the Nazis trying to bomb America or, or other countries that were trying to hurt us. And uh, we are very grateful for all your contributions to the city of Brockton. And I'm very honored to be our senator from the city of Brockton and from the 2nd Plymouth District. And as we move forward, I want to, to all enjoy the rest of the summer. So, la dolce vita. Thank you, Senator. Uh, we also have uh, from our state legislative delegation a state representative Michelle Dubois who would like to make some remarks. Brief remarks. I will be brief. So um, my grandmother, uh, before she got married, her name was Alba Verdone, and she lived on Grove Street. And she was like so many immigrants who, um, her mother immigrated here from Italy, but she didn't talk about it. She didn't talk about really much about my family's heritage. And a lot that I've learned was from the multiple people that were um, good friends with my great grandmother, who I guess ran a farm on Grove Street and sold illegal alcohol during um, prohibition that I thought she made with grapes, but now I realize she made from berries on a tree. She was quite the industrious woman and people loved her very much and that is really just the basis of so many immigrant stories. A really strong woman, she raised her children on her own and she did what she had to do to provide for her kids and my grandmother Albert Vodone, I love her and I love the Italian heritage and I appreciate um, all everyone, every, everything everyone here does um, to keep Italian heritage alive and I'm happy to be with you all today. Thank you very much. Well, we also want to uh, recognize, and we're very pleased to have joining us here today also, State Representative Jerry Cassidy is here with us, and State Representative, yeah, yeah, and State Representative Claire Cronin. So we're very happy to have the entire delegation uh, here with us. I guess, George, would you like me to do the proclamation, or what are you looking for here? How about Joe Picanzi? Is Joe going to say a few words? Yeah, okay. George, uh, George is letting me in on the program as we go along here. So, go ahead. Joe Picanzi is the commander of the Italian American War Vets here in the city of Brockton. And Joe is the, uh, as I have in front of me here, I want to give you his indication of what happened with Joe. I don't think the wind likes me. Joseph Picanzi, combat veteran, Korean War, received pre presidential unit citation from President Eisenhower in July 1953, and also is the, again, the commander of Post 62. Joe, just say a few words if you can. Thank you, Judge. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, also, a special thanks to the mayor for all the assistance you give us at the Wild Memorial Building. It's very much appreciated. Uh, it seems that every year we come up with a list of famous Italians that no one ever heard of in some cases. So I got a few names here. I won't keep you that long. And. Uh, uh, this is just possibly to uh, top uh, Todd Petty's list, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, jeans, like in blue jeans, especially the blue ones, are usually identified with American culture, but their origins, origins are Italian. In fact, denim can be traced back to the northern city of Genoa in the 17th century, where the cloth was worn by sailors. It is thought that the word jeans comes from the French word for Genoa Genesi. Newspapers. Arguably, the newspaper can be traced back to Venice in 1556 when the government published monthly handwritten news sheets called the Visi, 
no crosswords or cartoons. The Ephesus, the FCC typically used to carry political, military, and economic news. Jacuzzi. Relaxing in a jacuzzi may be a fun way to unwind after a hard day's work, but the first whirlpool bath was in fact designed by a hydrotherapeutic device for pain relief. It was invented in 1949 by Candido Jacuzzi, an Italian immigrant to the United States for his toddler son Kenny, who suffered from rheumatoid, excuse me, rheumatoid arthritis. Telephone. Although Alexander Bell was the first to be awarded a patent for the electronic telephone, Italian Antonio Miucci is often credited as the true inventor of the phone. The Italian immigrant to the U.S. began developing a voice communication device called a telefono in 1849. True, it didn't look much like a telephone, but apparently worked. Only in 2002 was his role in the invention process acknowledged by the U.S. Congress. Radio. Guglielmo Marconi is one of the chief minds behind the invention of radio. On December 12, 1901, he sent and received the first transatlantic radio signal. His pioneering work later earned him a Nobel Prize for, for Physics, along with Carl Ferdinand Braun. Soon afterwards, his wireless system was used by the sinking RMS Titanic to call for assistance, thus saving hundreds of lives. Battery. The first electronic battery, the Voltanic pile, was created by Alessandro Volta, the name should give you a clue, who published his findings in 1800. It was the first practical way of generating electricity that could continuously provide an electronic current to a circuit. The piano, Bartolomeo Cristofori, who came from Padua, Northern Italy, is recognized as the inventor of the piano. He worked as a happy chord maker for the Grand Prince of Tuscany, Ferdinand de Medici, and used his knowledge to build the first piano in around 1700. Banks. These can be traced to medieval and early Renaissance Italy, the most famous being the Medici Bank, founded by Giovanni di Bici di Medici in 1397. The oldest bank still in operation today is Monte di Pasci di Siena, which opened in 1472. The espresso machine. No great, great surprise. The espresso machine is an Italian invention. It's built and patented by Turin-based Angelo Moriondo, who then demonstrated it at the Turin General Exposition of 1884. Later, the machine was improved by Milanese mechanic Luigi Bezzetta. Liposuction. Although the first use of suction to help remove fat is attributed to a French surgeon in the 1920s, it was Italian gynecologist Dr. Arpad Fischer and his son Giorgio, who in 1974 invented the liposuction procedure as we know it today. Their technique involved using a blunt hollow cannula equipped with suction. And uh, that's the end of my list. Um, as you see, there are many famous Italians out there. A lot of people haven't even heard of these, some of these people. Um, but um, that's what our heritage is, and we should all be proud. All of us should be proud to be an Italian uh, because of a list similar to this here. Um, to tell you a little bit about our organization, we are the Italian-American War Veterans, 
Uh, we meet once a month at the Wild Memorial Building on the third Wednesday of the month. If there are any veterans out there that want to join our organization, you may do so. You do not have to be Italian. It will be worth, well worth your while as we, uh, all of our efforts are used to assist other veterans. Thank you very much. Joe, I, I don't know whether you know this or not, but Second World War, 15% of the armed forces were Italian. And that was the combination of the tie with Italy. And when we went to the Korean War and everything else, we've had some of our people, again, take a stand and use his life to save the troops. I can mention all of them. I've just got to say one thing, not long. The wind is against us. Italians have a sense of humor. But they make jokes about themselves, and that's what we should do. Not about any other nationality, but your own nationality. My father used to sit playing cards with the rest of the family when I was small, and he would tell jokes in Italian, and I tried to figure them out and I couldn't. But when I was older, he told me one. And I forgot it. <laughs> and when you get as old as me, you do that. Anyhow, this fellow was married for 50 years. And the priest at the church said to the young people that just got married because of the breakups in two years, and he said, I want you to come to a meeting and we'll call down the padre and we'll call the fellow down that's been married 50 years and ask him how he did it. They came to the church that night, was down in, underneath in the basement area. All the young people were there, the, just the men. And the fellow started talking that you have to treat your wife with respect. If you're someplace, buy her what she wants. If she wants to go to the shopping, go with her. And all those things make a good marriage. One fellow in the back row said, well, I understand you had your 25th anniversary. He says, yeah, that was 25 years ago. He said, what did you do? He said, I took her to Italy. I bought her clothes, the best hotel, the best food. One fellow said, and what are you going to do on your 50th? He said, go back and pick her up. <laughs> that can go for any nationality, remember. All right, now we're going to get the mayor up here. We're going to... Proclamation. The proclamation. All right, a quick proclamation and then we'll do the flag raising. So it is uh, on behalf of the city of Brockton, uh, my distinct honor and pleasure to issue this proclamation on behalf of the city. Whereas on June 2nd, 1946, in a national referendum, the people of Italy voted to abolish the monarchy in favor of adopting a republic form of government, which led to the formation of the Republic of Italy. And whereas this day is now annually celebrated as a day of national pride throughout Italy as Republic Day, and whereas the Italian culture has made a positive impact on our society since the dawn of Western civilization, making great contribution in the fields of arts, science, humanities, ports, and politics. And whereas the city of Brockton has been greatly enriched by the introduction of the traditions, religion, and cuisine of the Italian culture which were brought to us by the many Italian immigrants who made, the, made their way to our city and placed an indelible mark on the city of champions. And whereas it is an honor to recognize the accomplishments and contributions of our citizens of Italian heritage and extend to them our best wishes for continued success and prosperity. 
So now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Bill Carpenter, as the mayor of the city of Brockton, do hereby proclaim today as Italian Republic Day in the city of Brockton. I urge all residents of the city to recognize this occasion and all the wonderful contributions the Italian community has made to our city. And uh, perhaps we have Todd, do you want to come up? And maybe Joe, I'll present this to both of you as president of the, the Lodge and the Italian American War Veterans. So it's my honor to officially present this uh, to Joe and Todd on behalf of the city.